Yeah, I didn't think I was going to be making another video on franchise either. But you know what? I, I got to thinking about it. And I, I just felt like this, this series as a whole, stemming all the way back to the March to October, deserved a better conclusion. So as you might know, I played the White Sox March to October all the way through. I turned it into a franchise and then I came out with what? Like one episode every two months for like three episodes maybe four so needless to say we didn't get too far into the season and yeah th this i'll be honest i'm i'm disappointed in myself because back when i came up with the idea to turn this into a franchise i was thinking i'd finish that march to october in like june and then i'd have you know june until whenever mlb 21 came out to play through this franchise so i'm thinking at that time wow I'm going to be able to get like three or four years into the future. But then, you know, I lost consistency and didn't post enough. And next thing I knew, I only had a few episodes after turning it into franchise. And now here we are. But like I said, I felt like this team and this series needed an actual solid conclusion to it. So basically all that means is I set everything to auto here. Uh, all the scouting and all that stuff. And I'm just going to sim to the end, because I'm just curious to see if the team that we have, along with the pieces that I put in, can repeat as World Series champions. So just a very quick reminder before we get simulating, the, uh, the lineup is pretty much the White Sox of today. I don't believe I have anybody new who isn't, or who at the start of 2020 wasn't in a White Sox uniform. Uh, except for John Birdie, but then the pitching, that's where most of the changes came in. Jordan Montgomery in the rotation, and then the majority of the bullpen are guys that I either went out and traded for or signed. So, let's see what this team can do. I'm going to simulate, I think I'm just going to go up until the, uh, the All-Star break at first. We'll check on things, and then we'll get to the end and see if this team can win another World Series on its own. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit it sim through July 15th. And it's still going to pop up for uh, with with notices. This is what I didn't want. But we're good. At least we don't have to control anything. And man, right away the CPU making all kinds of trades. Interesting. What is happening? I mean, they're all minor leaguers. Dunning was a decently big trade though, but I was thinking about trading him anyway if we kept going. We can't really get too far past, well, I was just about to say we can't get too far past 500 and then we won like seven in a row, but this is a big trade. The CPU decided to trade away Jace Fry for Cole Calhoun. I don't really understand that move. Why get rid of a lefty for somebody who's just going to sit on the bench? Uh, yeah, we're going to simulate the draft, and I don't know, maybe, maybe we could have had some injuries and maybe that's why Cole Calhoun was traded for. And we get rid of Kalame now. Why are we dismantling the bullpen? I know Kalame and Fry aren't like main pieces at this point with all the bullpen guys we've gotten, but man, just getting rid of all the pieces. We do have a pretty solid record, it looks like, though. Yeah, th this was a good month. That, that June was actually kind of insane. Who are we getting rid of now? Philip Shinjo! No! Oh, man, he was going to be like... He was like the only prospect that was in this entire organization that was like actually having any upside. Yeah, he's definitely not somebody I would have traded, at least not yet, if I was still in control, but I'm not, so here we go. Alright, so it looks like here at the All-Star break, let's get through it here. No, what are we doing? We're contenders! Why are we dismantling the bullpen? This makes no sense. There was there was part of me when I was setting everything to auto that was thinking, you know what, maybe I should leave trades at manual so that nothing stupid happens like this. But I'm like, you know what, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it take control. I'm gonna see what this team can do all on its own. And then what what is this? What even is this return? Alright, well let's see the state of things. I don't get it. You're we're 60 and 37. We've got to be one of the better teams in the league at this point. Why are we trading away big pieces? But yeah, look at this June. I think we were like right around 500 coming into June and then all these wins. We were on a 15 game winning streak at one point. From this game in Minnesota to this game against the Cubs. That's 15. 
So yeah, let's just go on a 15 game winning streak and then get rid of the guy that closes out the games. Alright, so yeah, quick look at standings. We're only a half game up on the Twins and only two up on the Indians, so the AL Central just as uh, competitive as it was for the March to October. So what does our team even look like at this point? Kevin Newman is starting at second base. Okay, I mean, it, lo it looks like he's at least decent, but that means Nick Madrigal isn't starting, so he's losing out on some development, and he wasn't even that bad. I don't know what's going on with all the caught stealing. Uh, Cole Calhoun is DHing. We got Cameron Mabin from that, I think it might be the Giles trade, I don't remember. And then Nicky Delmonico was brought up. And then the bullpen, yeah, this is just not quite as good. I mean, it's still a good bullpen, but like, man, we had an insane bullpen. And like, now it, it, it's still obviously still solid, but losing guys like Kalame and and uh, Giles for same two, Tui Viola... And 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 John, I tried on that name. I really did. I don't know. I can't lie. This this is disappointing to me. This really is. But just quick overview of some stats. Looks like Giolito and Montgomery are pretty solid. Rodon awful. Keuchel solid. And then Kopech, when we were still playing through this, he had a rough start. So it looks like he's kind of turned things around. And then in the bullpen, our main guys, the guys we started with, Bummer's really good. Givens is really good. Hands really good, Doolittle's really good, Hendrix is ri who, I mean, seriously, who didn't see this coming? Everybody that was already in our bullpen had a sub-3 ERA. And then when, when it said, when it showed the Giles trade screen, I'm pretty sure he was like 1.22. Alright, so just checking here, because Kalame was sent to the Orioles, looks like he wasn't that good. And then Jace Fry, he wasn't that great either. So like, I knew they weren't you know both of them weren't the main pieces of our bullpen but they're still contributors and then to trade away Giles actually I didn't check on him yeah so Ken Giles had 25 saves a 1.22 ERA I don't see how you trade away a closer like Giles when you're contenders and real quick I just realized I meant to mention this at the start and I, I didn't but after the last episode, whenever that was, I recorded what was going to be the next episode right after that. So I had like a full episode recorded that I never uh, uploaded. So I guess if you were wondering if, if you watched the last episode and then you came across this one, and you were wondering why we started out in slightly different spots, that's why. But I also, I mean it's kind of it's kind of worthless at this point, but I made a trade that was gonna be in that episode it was a pretty big deal and you can't even go back to see it I guess yeah I guess it doesn't go back that far but I traded away Dane Dunning got a pretty good pitching prospect I did a catcher swap too in the same trade for triple-a catchers so it, it would have been a fun trade as we moved forward into this because the pitching prospect I got for it was seemed pretty good uh, I was this Jackson Rutledge here he was 21 a potential and he was six foot eight, so I, I don't know how much that actually plays into the simulation and all that, but that was the guy I was kind of excited for after making that trade. But let's just let's get back into the simulations here. Let's see how much more the CPU can ruin this team. I'm not gonna go all the way to the end at once here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to the end of August here first. And let's see what's going on. No surprise, we're we're losing games now. Trade away one of our best assets and we what was that drop four games right after the break trading away minor leaguer all right picking up some are you kidding me seeing this trade happen it is seriously making me reconsider uploading this version of this episode like i'm honestly thinking should i just like back out rejoin in where i started turn off trading and then go from there no i'm not we're already this far in let's just let's just get it over with why would the the white Sox would never trade away jose abreu unless he was like way in decline and and he agreed to it he loves being on the white Sox. i'm stopping simulating why would we do that i mean we're still in contention here only three games back in the division because we just need Nathan Eovaldi, right? We just we just absolutely need a starting pitcher who's going to have a five over five ERA. On oh, we we gotta we gotta get a reliever, right? We gotta we gotta pick up a solid reliever because you know that was definitely a spot that was 
that was weak. Oh, but at least, at least we also picked up a, a bench third baseman. I don't get this. I really don't get it. They, I don't know if maybe the CPU just wanted it, it to be Andrew Vaughn's time. I mean, he definitely took a big dip in his numbers this year. It looks like. Well, I don't even know. It's. I mean, it, it's a. It's a dip, but it's. I don't know if it's as big as I thought at first. I don't get it. I don't know if, if for some reason the CPU's thinking we need to offload salary. I mean, it could come back to the whole budget system that one week it was saying we are negative 830,000, the next week we are up 1.2 million a week. I don't get it, but let's just keep chugging on. No more trades at the deadline, thank God, but I don't know, we're losing games now. They, the CPU might have just decided to not make us contenders. Actually, we picked up a couple more at the end. Let's just get this over with. Let's just see where things finish off here. All right, come on. Come on. I don't know what we need. The White Sox have finished as a wild card team and will be playing the Twins. So that means the Indians won. Wow, so the Indians finished with 103 wins, Twins with 100, and then we get the second wild card spot with 95. All right, well, it all comes down to this wild card game. So we're gonna have Giolito take the mound, and it looks like this is the default lineup that the CPU set us up with. I guess I forgot to look at All-Stars too. Mankata wasn't an All-Star, but Eloy and Grandal were. Anybody else doesn't look like it. All right, I'm gonna start simulating here. As far as I know, this is the only way to do it. Again, I might be stupid, but I don't play enough franchise really. So let's let's get through this here. So it looks like a early pitcher's duel. We're putting up a couple hits. Giolito hit list through two. We can't seem to get anybody around though on five hits. And Giolito's still going strong. We hit a solo homer. I don't know who that was, but now Giolito's giving one up. And we hit another one. I don't know who that was either. This is a little fast pace right now. Another solo shot that looked like maybe Luis Robert. Another home run. We're taking a bit of a lead here. Giolito still going strong through seven. And we still throwing him out there. What are we going to do for the ninth? We don't have Giles. Michael Givens. Okay. And we win. So the, the postseason dream is still alive. Just a quick look at the box score. Tim Anderson, four for five. So he's picking up right where he left off in the last postseason. What was it? He either set the record or tied the record for uh, hits in a single postseason. The home runs were hit by Vaughn, Tim Anderson, Cole Calhoun, and Newman. Giolito threw eight, only gave up the one, and then Givens, I mean, not the save, but finished things off. So the postseason's still rumbling on. So we're taking on the Indians. The other division rival that made the playoffs is who we have up next to face here. I'm going to I'm going to sim until it's an elimination game and then we'll do the same thing as the wild card game. So, game 1, Jordan Montgomery pitching and we pick up the shutout win. Wow. All right, let's get to game 2, Carlos Rodon and we lose. Of course we lose cuz of course he's going to give up all those runs. On to game three, though, Giolito back on the mound, and we pick up another win, 6-2. to two. Why, did it, why, why did it say Keiko pitched? I thought it said Giolito was supposed to pitch, but Keiko got the uh, the win, five or six innings. All right, I guess Giolito's pitching this game, then. And we're going to, it's an elimination game, so we're going to hop in and simulate from that other, that other screen. All right, so Giolito on the mound again. It worked out pretty well in the last simulation like this. And we already are putting up three in the first. Keep it going. Okay, we give up a solo in the top of the second. And I just hope we can keep mounting on the runs. It looks like we had the bases loaded. And now it's back to one run game. But somebody hit another home run. And we're putting up another. And it's, this is all off Shane Bieber too. I didn't realize that. It looks like uh, Giolito won't last as long as his other start. But he's still, he's still going strong through five here we got a nice lead but it would be nice to uh, get more of a lead and that's exactly what we get with a three run home run alright I'm feeling a lot better about this game looks like we have a pretty good shot at moving on to the ALCS we just need a game ender here and it does 
eight to two win against the Indians. We we win the series. Moving on to the ALCS now. Anderson another three hit game. Robert and Vaughn with home runs. Everyone picked up a hit who started. Well, I guess everyone who who got in a bat picked up a hit. We're taking on the Yankees in the ALCS. Kind of figured. I think that's who we faced in the March to October also. So it's a rematch from last season. Jordan Montgomery taking the mound for the first game. Looks like Severino for them did not have a good first game of his postseason. And we don't pick up the game one win. But, all right, game two, Rodone. We do pick up the win for Rodone. All right, so evening the series at one. Another win here. So we're taking a 2-1 to one lead in the series. So I guess we could technically wrap this one up at home if we pick up a win in the next two games. We got Keiko on the mound for this one, and we can't do it. So series tied at 2. It's going to be going back to New York. I don't want Nathan Eovaldi pitching, but I guess we're going to have to make do. Let's see what he's got. A loss. All right, well, this could be the end. Let's hop in and sim it. All right, it's another Severino versus Montgomery matchup, and right away, two-run home run to take the lead. They did get one back on a solo, but we're putting up another there. Let's just keep piling it on. I like seeing the big leads early. Montgomery pitching strong again. What a, what a pickup he was. I don't get why he was so good, but through both the seasons we've had him now, he's been... A solid number two pitcher behind Giolito. Actually, he might have been better than Giolito overall, honestly. But he's still going, gives up another home run there. We haven't gotten as much run support as I'd like, but we do pick up another. And Montgomery's still out there through seven against his former team, too. And we've got another two runs there, another three, actually. And it's back to an eight to two lead. Montgomery's still going, give him the CG. Come on. Save the bullpen for game seven. Now Michael Givens is going to pitch, but a 10-2 lead is probably safe, and we do it. Another victory. So we're going to push this one to a game seven, it looks like, to try and get back to the World Series. Vaughn, the only one held hitless. Mancada and Jimenez both picked up a home run. We had six, seven doubles hit in that game, but we still have one more win we got to pick up. Heading into game seven against the Yankees. So here we go, game seven matchup, Carlos versus Tanaka. I have a sneaking suspicion that we won't see another eight inning outing from our pitcher here. Yeah, or uh, he gave up three, in the, three hits in the first, but no runs allowed, so he worked out of it looking strong in the second. Bit of a pitcher game going on here. One run, first run coming in the fourth. Rodone, still going good through four. Another run. Let's let's keep it going. Three to nothing now. Rodone giving up the home run though, bringing it back to just one run lead. And we can't score it. One in the six, and they tie it up in the bottom of the sixth. Rodone still pitching though. Gant in now. Just don't give this one up, Gant. We're into the eighth. We got to pick up a run against Chapman. Come on, and we do. I don't know who came through. But our bullpen has got to hold it. This is what it was meant for. This is why I built it in the offseason. And we can't hold the lead. A blown save in the ninth. And then they walk it off on, I think, a home run. Oh, my God. What a way for our season to come to an end. I mean, I hate to say it, but uh, imagine if we still had Giles. But I guess through simulating... This team just barely did not have what it takes to get back to the World Series. I mean, in all honesty, once all those trades started happening and and I guess the CPU decided to go into some kind of rebuild phase. I don't even know if you could call it rebuild because almost everyone that we traded for was still on the MLB roster. But even with that happening, we still made it all the way back to Game 7 of the ALCS. So I can only imagine if our team stayed the way I wanted it to, maybe we would have done a little bit better. Maybe we would have been able to make it back. Or who knows, it could have ended up worse. So let's just sim to the end here, see who picks up that World Series ring. And the Yankees defeat the Dodgers, so we would have had a rematch of the World Series too if I would have uh, made that, if, if we could have pulled that one out. So 
I guess that does it for the White Sox March to October slash franchise mode. Again, I still regret how it ended. Huge missed opportunity. We probably could have gone another couple years into the future if I had stayed consistent throughout the year, but it is what it is. Things happen. Things get in the way. But that was last year. So for MLB 21, I'm really excited for what I've got in store. I don't have any plans right now of doing a franchise mode just because they still really haven't changed it all that much but i'm definitely going to be doing another white Sox march to october i'm going to be starting that pretty much right away so if you enjoyed that last year you're definitely going to enjoy it next year so make sure you subscribe to see that and actually before we end things i'm kind of curious to see who retired that's all i really care about i just want to see if any of our guys retired i'm not going to do anything more in the off season and it looks like nobody of any sort of importance from our team retired any hall of famers albert he finally hung up the cleats making the hall of fame as we knew he would but yeah that that is it now if you like this video if you thought at least it was you know a decent conclusion to the whole white Sox thing this year hit that like button for me and as I've already said, subscribe to see what's in store for MLB 21. But that's all I've got for this one. Thank you all of you for sticking with this series all the way back at the beginning of the uh, White Sox March to October. But that's all, and I hope to see you in the March to October for MLB The Show 21.